what we were doing before is we were accommodating toward standards but what it was is we weren't working so much with the teachers we were doing it more in silos so kids would come to us for interventions and we would create goals that we'd work on just in intervention time so that's when you'd see the 80 percent accuracy and us taking plus minus data throughout the day and then now I'm able to use the teacher rubrics, go into classes, sit down with the teacher at progress monitoring time and go, okay, I'm seeing it in my room that she's at a two, what are you seeing? So then we can come in and compare and see where things are at. The other thing I like about proficiency, and I was talking to other people earlier, is utilizing the transferable skills and their habits of work scores to develop life skills goals and behavior goals because before they were also accuracy based so i could come to a class and sit for 80 percent of the time that might now be i can come to class and be a participant following a habit of work or getting a job would be a transferable skill so now we have more of those that we can play with to make those goals it feels more integrated and i think for them they feel more like they're part of the school and I think it finally gets to the point of what individualized plans were. It's making it about what the student needs in the construct of education. Um, last in service, Melissa Piscatilli and I did the aha moment where a student was only going to get a two and she's like, but that's a three really for that student. And we had the aha, we can back out the rubric and create one just for this student and he's going to get a three for the work he's doing which was the aha. Um, it isn't so much here's your end. We give them your end for us is graduation. How are we going to get there? And here's where we need to go. And for a lot of the kids, it's hard for even just kids with SLD, so specific learning disabilities, to see a two on the report card all the time. Mm -hmm. When they're trying so hard to get there and that's their level that they can attain. So then when we back out those rubrics and create it so that a two for them is actually a three that speaks more volume. So we're taking your two and making that your proficient and then making the three, which everyone else is getting, is your four and then creating the ones and twos for you as to where you're at. For other students who have one-on-one -on -one supports, more life skills based students, for their proficiencies we're adding in done with adult support um, and then backing up where we want them to be independent. So we have independence um, with a little bit of adult support with full adult support to just sort of see the differences. And then we're working on how can we report that in PowerSchool on report cards as well as attaching the progress in IEPs. All right, so this year what we did is we've been working a lot on making IEP goals more proficiency based. So instead of having the percentage 80% accuracy for so many days, what we're working on is looking at rubrics that teachers have created, backing them out so a student might be at a developing level, level two at their independent level. So that's their now proficiency. So we're taking the goals and stating with all of their tools that they could use, so graphic organizers, teacher's assistance, pre-writing, proofreading, editing, just when editing his or her writing at the developing proficiency level. So that's how we're writing goals now. And it's more clear for parents to see where they are at versus 80% accuracy of, I can cross the street 80% of the time, or the 20% of the time I might get hit by a car. Now we can show, I can at the proficient level walk across the street independently, or I can walk across the street proficiency with an adult support. Makes it a little bit more clear as to what we're expecting students to do. It also makes it easier for teachers to back out rubrics now. This binder pretty much has just been my, since last year, gathering um, work samples. I teach a pathways class, which is our pull out for math and language arts for our kiddos who have intellectual disabilities who can't be in the regular classes. So what I've done there is I will use the essential elements and look at their IEP goals and go, okay, you are all reading at a level M. Your seventh grade wants you here. I'm going to look at the elements and go, okay, we're way back here. Here's our standard. 
I don't want to present the standard to them in that that language for maybe it's second grade. It's just too low. Mm -hmm. So I'll change the I can statements into their user friendly language for them. And then I create their own little rubrics on top of their worksheets so they can see where they're at within each lesson they're doing. And then I just have their I can statements here and then other ones are color coded. So that way they can see if they're doing a current event, it's gonna be on the blue sheet versus guided reading might be on yellow. So then they know we're switching, gives them a visual cue. A lot of what we'll do is I'll give them the rubric and they score it themselves. Mm -hmm. And then I'll score it with them and show them. Like, here's where you thought you were at, here's where you're at. And sometimes they score themselves so much lower than they actually are scoring. Mm 